Hello and welcome to Geek at Play Studio tutorials. So let's look a little bit more on the cameras and what options we have it, what kind of advanced options we have it. So right here we have a camera to access there. You can select right click edit object. You also can access from top menu. So right here we have it advanced camera options. We have it our preview. We also have it our gamma correction or a linear workflow selected. We can access by clicking on edit and you notice currently it's enabled by the standard 2.2 we have it also enabled by 1.8 or just one what this does it's created um kind of same standard using for the luminosity and other options of the materials and rendering across different applications if you're just using inside the view and you want a good sharp image be sure it's Disable so it will give you higher contrast, it's more color, less wash out. But if you're using Vue, if you think you will work for the um, some film processing or other things, you probably want to enable um, gamma correction and set to the values that is you using at your workplace. So you'll notice we have the overall render gamma. We also have it for the texture, so it will apply proper corrections on the textures that we're loading on site. So currently it says 2.2. Next, we also have an aspect ratio show and options that we can set for the cameras. Most of them you can find inside the render options. We have it set up as television wide screen. So it's set by the default and pixel aspect ratio set to one. So it's square pixel. Normally you will find for the wide screen, it's a, I think it's 0.92 or something like this. So you can set manually adjust as well, you can also adjust the focal link here for the camera, as well as if you select your camera, you can adjust right in these areas. We also have it now horizontal field of view and verticals that you can adjust to your own standards. Um, also the lens abbreviation, all distortions on the side so you can um, compensate for some focal lens. All these values, they kind of link together and related. So if you adjust some of those values, be sure you kind of is set right here. You can see my um, vertical field of view increasing. So is my focal link changed as well. So you can see how they're related. Usually, um, if you understand what you're doing, you can modify this. As a general rule, you can just modify focal link from here and all the settings will automatically apply it. Of course, if you want wide angle and least uh, less lens distortion, so you can open and just decreasing a little bit right here, so you have it kind of affect these values. We also have a panoramic view as usual, so we can creating horizontal or spherical panoramic for your HDRI images or other options you wanted. Um, we also have the motion blur option apply here to the camera move. This will apply not just generic to one object, this will apply to the whatever camera is moved to everything around will apply the motion blur. A film settings, this is to simulate after exposure. So um, if you have multiple source options, you probably want to disable this. So your exposure will say same, doesn't try to compensate for brightness and lightings. Um, also um, exposure, you can manually adjust afterwards. Also have it the natural film response. So it's kind of simulate the um, film, how the affecting to the lighting. And if you render for realism, you probably want to enable this. If you render for the cleaner architectural, you maybe want to disable these options. Lens glare, it's for the lighting effect the, on a camera. And you also can modify the lens glare from each individual light source. Post-processing, it's um, straightforward, so you have a color correction as a standard hue, brightness, duration, gain in density, so you can modify these one options. Okay, as well, the color filter and perspective. Um, we also have right here post-processing um, options that apply to all cameras that, because if we have more than one and you don't want to just go to each of them, so you can apply it and it's well to all of them. As well, we just look on a camera manager before, so a way we can create additional multiple cameras. For this, you just need type name and I click OK. So it's create new camera. Or if you're selecting, you just can remove this camera 
from this menu as well. Um, this is interesting the options we have with the backdrops. What backdrops let us to do it is add some backdrop up from the camera so it will work. Well, it's right here. So we have it one. Like for example, I have it nebula. Now let me select this one. And it's actually placing. Okay, we also notice we have it override um, atmosphere. Look in a second what we can do. And right here, you see now up front of camera, we have it kind of almost like a shield. So if we move, the one thing only about this, okay, right here, you can see we have the backdrop located. You can see the problem is backdrop is moving with the camera. So if I try to follow some object, okay, let's go ahead and load it one. Okay, so right here we have one. Let's bring it front. So you can see we have a starship. So if I take my camera and I move it, you can see the object is moving, but screen always statically stay ahead up front and sometimes this is okay if you render just still image but if you render animations it's not necessarily what you want to you want actually the following the object or make static and i'll show you in a second how we can do this but so right here we have it also notice backdrop apply to main camera but if i create or select different camera it does not apply Okay, right here so let me go even we see but in a screen you can see it does not apply to this so the backdrop apply only to the camera that's selected so again right here we don't have a backdrop let's just render so you can see no backdrop on this camera and again if we select this one you can see backdrop even we see that backdrop in our screen. The plus and minus is to use a backdrop this way. So the first it is right located in right place so we can kind of always assign to the camera. We don't need to worry about scaling. We also can use it as atmosphere. So if we apply override atmosphere you will notice at this point that our atmosphere settings kind of overlaid. So this is kind of nice option for this um, and also we can use it the animations so it's got some uh, pluses for this but how I say the for me biggest minus it's kind of linked to the camera however you can some modify by zooming in and out kind of closer but overall I don't know if it's the um, interesting ways to do it okay, so let me go ahead and disable this background right now Okay, the other ways we can do it's um, in some tutorials are showing, but we can use it alpha planes or even I prefer to use it planets because how they affect to atmosphere. So we can create a super big planet. Okay, let's go change phase, we'll increase brightness just softness and we'll just go to select custom okay let's load it okay you can see we have an atmosphere effect but at this point if we take our camera you can see the it's changing as well the position so it may work a little bit there okay so this is one way to do it Again, let's go back to our options and this is about all options except we have it right here render options that is your normal render options you can access by right clicking with mouse right here we have it all access your render settings as well we have it our panoramic if you remember similar what in other options and also your rate show preset here as well so this is kind of for the advanced options for the cameras um, we will explore more in other tutorials. We also look on some 
tracking and linking options with cameras. Thank you for watching this tutorial from Geek at Play Studio. Please remember this as the web is www.geekatplay.com.